Thank you for joining us for today's webinar entitled, Improve Your Laboratory Quality Assurance Program with Beckman Coulter's EIQAP. We will also be holding a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. You may submit a question at any time by typing it into the Q&A box on the top left side of your console. The presentation today will be given by Matt Reiner. And now I would like to turn it over to Matt Reiner. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you, everybody who's online with us today. I'm excited today to discuss our uh, upgraded electronic interlab quality assurance program portal and uh, show you some of the new features and how it can help your lab uh, improve its quality assurance program. So <clears throat> I'll speak for a short time, and then I have one of our technical experts here, Patrick O'Neill, who will provide you a web demonstration. And at the end of that, we will uh, be able to take your Q&A. So uh, this is just the overview. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just give you several report example solutions, discuss new changes to the website, as well as the demo of the EQ IQAP program. So <clears throat> what is uh, EIQAP? It's a valuable tool for quality assurance solutions. It provides a global peer group comparison uh, for the uh, sensitivity and specificity of your assays, and it, it has effective tools to ensure opti optimal system performance. Moreover, and, and perhaps uh, more importantly, uh, these types of interlab quality assurance programs are highly recommended by several standard setting organizations. And, and we lift, listed a few of the key ones here. Um, and, and you know, as we travel around the world, there's uh, several different uh, solutions for this need, but Beckman Coulter has a free portal for our customers and uh, it, it's quite popular, which is why we wanted to have a webinar today to educate you about it. So what is the Beckman Coulter program? Uh, yeah, the QC is performed routinely to ensure an instrument is consistently reporting reliable results. And a complete QC plan in the laboratory will provide benefits to ensure the verification of the functionality, uh, troubleshooting, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about how this can assist you in troubleshooting, and of course, uh, accurate patient results are, are, are of utmost importance. Uh, the EKIP portal allows you to submit quality control data and promptly receive uh, reports comparing you to your peer groups. Uh, it's free of charge to customers within with all hematology instrumentation configured with Beckman Coulter reagents and using Beckman Coulter controls and calibrators. Uh, this offer has actually been around since 1986, <laughs> which predates the World Wide Web, but uh, we, 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 we've been innovating in this offering for, for several decades now. And I think the latest generation is quite exciting, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, you can even use your mobile phone now. So, so to get you into the specifics of, of how the EIQAP works, each instrument is assigned a unique number, which identifies the facility, the location of the instrument in the facility, and of course, the instrument itself. Um, a number is assigned when the instrument is enrolled on the EIQAP website, <clears throat> and I think a key point here is that different user profiles can be linked to one instrument registration as in a multi-user facility. That is, uh, different supervisors are in different shifts, for example, could upload data for one particular instrument. They would each have their own personal login, but it would be tied to an instrument uh, profile. The first five digits are a unique ID due to the institution. And the last three digits respond, uh, correspond specifically to the, laboratory, the instruments within a laboratory. So let's talk about the global peer group comparison. Uh, it's one of the largest groups of control data worldwide. There's many thousands of instruments uh, in, in, in the pool, uh, in, in our population. Uh, the next thing to note is that there's a minimum pool size of 16 participants per control lot instrument pair for statistical accuracy. So what this means is if you have a control material uh, with a lot number and you're running it on our, our DXH 800, for example, you'd have to have at least 16 participants running the same lot number on a DXH before you would get a peer group comparison. So even if they're running the same lot number on a LH or older Beckman platform, you wouldn't have the comparison. 
uh, and no report will be generated until we have statistically significant results. This is a way to ensure that you don't get uh, a spurious result uh, that could cause you an unnecessary panic. So how do we uh, ensure your optimal system performance? EIQAP is really one part of this package that we offer, but in the portal it has assay sheets, the pool statistics, which we referred to, our linearity reports, which uh, we'll show you several examples of, the EIQAP reports, which will show you how to analyze, corporate uh, reports for multi-site facilities, as well as uh, some technical literature that, that you may find of use. In addition, the call center provides technical troubleshooting and, of course, access to our pro service remote monitoring systems, which can help you identify system issues very rapidly and has uh, significant benefits for your uptime. Uh, you know, pro service is a little bit out of scope of the conversation today, but in a, a future webinar, we'll detail some of the offerings from that system. So in terms of example reports, these are reports that provide a complete statistical analysis of the instrument performance and show how instruments compare to those of peers. The reports are offered by IQAP are monthly reports, the linearity reports, and the corporate reports. Importantly, the reports are archived uh, online through the portal for up to two years, so you'll have some uh, data in the event of a, a laboratory audit. So to show you a few example reports, you know, here we have the imaginary hospital. Uh, you can see the IQ AP ID for the instrument in question, and you can uh, see here quickly the, uh, our, our Coulter 5C cell control results, uh, the dates, the lots, and, and, and which ones were tested. This uh, uh, header is, is given with each report as well as a summary uh, uh, Assuming that in this case, everything passed normally, as it is provided as a header information in the report. You, you see here again the imaginary hospital, IQP ID, the report ID. And, and now we're getting into the actual data set of the EIQAP. So <clears throat> we have our, our WBC, our neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, et cetera, et cetera. And, and each column here represents both your mean, the values for the instruments uh, here, which is one, two, three, four, five, as well as the pool mean. And again, that pool mean refers to the instrument control pair, uh, your SD uh, versus the, the, and the SE diff, as well as the current and historical CVs. So you can see your CV, the historical CVs, as well as the pool CV. So this really gives you a, a great way to compare your results against several different types of information, uh, both historically and relative to your peer groups. Uh, and, and similarly, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about SDI and CVI in the coming slides. So what does SDI and CVI represent? <clears throat> So SDI is, is really a measure of accuracy, and CVI is, is a measure of variance or uh, precision. So a perfectly accurate and perfectly precise measurement would be in the center of this, this box. And this box is described by two variables, which is SDI and, and CVI. Uh, so long as the uh, values from your controls fall within the box, you can assume that your results are acceptably precise and accurate. If, however, <clears throat> they fall outside of the box, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, there, there's more risk of a, a, a problem that needs to be investigated. So we'll show you graphically what this looks like on the next page. So as you can see here, we have uh, the three different types of control, the abnormal, normal, abnormal one, normal, and abnormal two as well as the different sorts of cells within those controls, and you, you can see the instrument performance. In this case, the, the beauty of the visual presentation of this data is that you can quickly see whether an instrument is performing within specification or outside of specification uh, just, just by looking at these graphs. So luckily, we have no blue dots outside of the graphs, which is an indication of uh, normal performance, and uh, it is a good sign. 
In the next set of example reports, we're going to discuss linearity reports. So the uh, linearity control reports are a slightly different assay and, and, and ha therefore has a slightly different set of uh, report profiles. You can have the, the linearity plot, the bias plot, uh, a, a tabular format showing you all the different uh, levels of controls, as well as the mean values, assay values, bias, et cetera, et cetera. So you, again, you know, in one sheet, you can get a very um, good understanding of your performance with respect to a singular linearity control. So this, this first report is for WBC, leukocytes. We have R RBC, erythrocytes, uh, hemoglobin, platelets, all available in this format. And, and you can really tell how your instrument's performing with each cell population uh, that, that we have a linearity control for. The next format uh, to consider are our, our corporate reports. And as I alluded to earlier, the corporate reports are for multi-site facilities that, that may be running um, multiple versions of, or multiple systems that are all the same. And what this does is it allows you to compare the different laboratories within your network. So in the, the standard reports, when you compare it to the pool, it's, it's more of a randomly assigned uh, group that, that, that's a function of the lock control. With the corporate reports, you're really comparing head-to-head -head against different labs in your network. As to the uh, EIQAP web refresh, uh, some of the things that are, are new and improved, we have our new and improved user interface, which we're going to show you in a few minutes, is, is very modern and uh, more intuitive. Multi-language support, we are a truly global company. This is a truly global offering and can really help labs around the world. We have both cytometry and hematology merged into a common platform. Uh, w today, we're not focusing on the cytometry piece of the IQAP portal, but it's certainly available, and I think uh, adds a lot of value to our customers that have our flow cytometry solutions. We have a cross-platform compatibility with web browsers, so Mozilla, Chrome, uh, IE8, Safari, as well as operating systems. The website's been optimized for performance, so it's much faster to upload data and generate reports. Uh, we'll show you the improved upload process, which is, is a much faster way to do bulk uploads. QC upload process works the same, but it will provide you immediate status on submission. We have validation of file uploads, the ability for users to correct errors uh, for already uploaded files, we streamline registration and enrollment, and you know we are in uh, the 21st century. Everything has to be mobile. We've uh, we, we now support mobile web use. So this is what the homepage looks like. Patrick's going to talk a lot more about this in a few minutes. So I just want to show you that uh, it's accessible through our hematology landing page at the BeckmanCulter.com website, and uh, you'll 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 see this highlighted more and more in time. Uh, we have banner alerts, which provide important information. We have uh, access to hematology assay values. You can sign in or register for a new account all on this uh, single page. So if you clicked on the previous screen on access hematology assay values, what you get is the ability to search by kit lot number or uh, search by lot number and part kit number. Uh, different ways of identifying the uh, controls that you want to compare to. You can also uh, look at an individual instrument through the IQAP. Uh, this is the current instrument you've selected. You can access all the reports through these various tabs, which is uh, you know, very intuitive to a modern software user. The buttons ease the navigation around the website and make it much easier to make changes if necessary. So as I said uh, previously, the uh, portal supports the entire portfolio of, of Beckman Coulter hematology instruments. You have to select the desired instrument from a dropdown. It will show you the serial number, EIQAPAD, as well as an image of the instrument. This user has uh, all of our Beckman Coulter hematology instruments, <laughs> oh. which is exciting. 
Um, you can edit the instrument. Uh, you can change the location. Uh, you, you can uh, change the uh, uh, units that the instrument is, is is reporting in, et cetera, et cetera. Then administration. So here you can uh, grant user access. You can manage who has access to which instruments. You can manage the corporate report settings, uh, which allow you to compare multiple instruments within the institution. You can manage <coughs> Your institutional information, if there's a change to your lab location or the address or, or you have a, a staff change and need to identify a new contact person for Beck and Coulter. And of course, there's a, a host of preferences for uh, identifying how you want to customize the EIQAP portal. In terms of uh, resources, the, the laboratories will receive an email upon successful enrollment of an instrument. You can quickly access the EIQAP support, which includes a manual, as well as uh, instructions on how to download data. And then uh, what Patrick's going to be able to demo is, is uh, uploading instrument files, how to do this efficiently. Uh, you can either upload them, uh, you can upload them daily or monthly. Um, the quality control data, uh, can be entered as well, very intuitively, simple interface. You can delete individual entries or an entire submission. All data is verified when save submitted and you'll receive a pop-up message to give you a confirmation that it was successfully entered into the system. Uh, you can create body fluid linearity data uh, for all, all, all lots, ensures the data is submitted will display on the report properly. Again, you'll get a pop-up message that was done correctly. And then, of course, uh, for linearity data, you can also receive confirmation. So what we've really tried to do is, is, is provide you as much confirmation that the system is performing uh, completely and accurately as designed. So on, onto the reports tab, uh, Here's where you would open the various reports that are available to you, cell control, uh, statistics could be recalculated if other participants submitted data after report, if the lot number is still active. You can get the linearity reports. You can get uh, a record of all the data that was submitted for this particular uh, instrument. Users can still add data, even if it shows pending or pending with errors. Uh, some, some submission status messages. So submitted means that the data has been received by the IQAP department, is ready for import. Imported means that the data has been submitted and has been imported into the database for pool group comparison by instrument, control type, and level. The report means that the report has been generated on submitted data. Pending identifies that the data has not yet been submitted to the IQAP department, but the uh, uh, daily linearity or entry is, is, is in process and not completed. And if there's an error, you get the pending with error message. Uh, you could open the file, identify the issue, correct it per your our protocol, save and resubmit. On the pool statistics tab, the final tab uh, under, uh, under this menu, you can review the current pool data, and it, at, they, they can be recalculated as uh, uh, your, your peer groups submit more data. So that's it for the basic overview. I, I want to reiterate that you can actually do all of this over your mobile phone and check your linearity reports remotely, which is a big advantage in a busy laboratory. Uh, you can simply enter uh, qapweb.beckmancolta.com into your mobile browser log in with your username and password, and then you have access to the IQAP portal in the palm of your hand. So uh, I want to thank you for listening to me during the introduction, and I'd like to turn over the webinar now to uh, Patrick O'Neill, who will show you a demonstration of the uh, portal itself and how to upload data. So Patrick, I'm going to pass you the presentation.
got to grab it first. It's not coming up. Thanks, Matt. Um, I appreciate everybody's attention this afternoon. And what I'm going to do is give you a brief overview of the page live. This is my actual test site. And as you can see, I'm logged in as my alias, which is Stephen Smith. If you have a question about your username and password, where you go to change that is typically under Stephen Smith because that's your profile. So if you select on that, my profile comes up. And as you see, you'll be able to enter the username and password. Again, it's been quite idle for a while, so I have to go in there and, and do it again. And if you want to change your password, you can do that here. If you want to edit your title, or you want to change your phone number, extension, et cetera, your email, you do that here. Also, you can edit your institution, the particular department, or make address changes. Again, this is for your particular profile. Again, you can submit or cancel. Cancel will always return you, as it says at the bottom of the screen, to the dashboard. When we hit cancel, the dashboard is now this new top form that you find right here. Again, it will tell you where you want to go as a home page to the dashboard. It will always identify the instrument that you are currently logged into. One thing I do want to make certain that everybody understands is when you're on this particular page and you have this particular DXH um, displayed, you will be able to see only the information responsible or should say affiliated with that instrument. If you want to look at, say you have three different DXHs, you're going to have to go in and select Change Instrument. At that point, you'll be able to get all the other instruments that you have access to. Another thing that's come up recently that I think is quite a benefit with the new EIQAP site is if you have flow cytometry in your laboratory, you're not mandated to leave the IQAP site. You can actually put those flow systems in and access them from your home page. So it makes it a little bit easier for those of us that have not only the hematology, but the flow cytometry in one particular laboratory. So, what else do I want to show you? The banner. If the banner gets in your way, it does take up some space, you can actually X out of it. And then that takes up the page for you to display the instrument and the information responsible. Um, let's say I want to change my instrument. Let's go change instrument and then I can select from any of the instruments that I have. In this case, I have quite a few DXHs. So again, I can get rid of the banner, and I can go down and I can look at the cell control reports, the linearity reports, any data submissions for B2. Okay, there I have one that's actually, these are imported. And then I have pool statistics. Again, pool statistics, you have to put in the actual lot number of the particular control, then that will be displayed for you. It's recommended that if you want to submit data, you check the pool statistics on a routine basis to see how many um, other participants you have added to that particular lot number so that you get the best statistics. I'm going to go back to change an instrument. I'm going to go back to my B1 system. I can always add an instrument. This is the easiest way for you to add an instrument in your laboratory. You simply select the instrument and the particular serial number, and it gets added to your account. You will then be considered an administrator for this instrument and be responsible for most of the information that comes through it. We are working at, on a, a future project to grant super users to each account. It's a very simple process. You simply enter the instrument serial number and go to next, and it will select the particular instrument that you want to, to use. I'm going to cancel at this point because I don't want to add any more instruments. The next one is edit the instrument. Matt alluded to this a little bit earlier. If I want to change the particular reagent, maybe I went to scientific units instead of U.S., you simply make those, those changes at this point. 
Once you make those changes, it's always important to hit submit. Submit will take those changes, put them to our database, and you always want to make sure that your reports and your reporting units are in alignment, especially on the instrument. All right, resources. Resources are very important. Resources where you get the IQAP brochure, the instructions for use, and also we've broken out the IQAP manual by the chapters and by instruments. So it's a little bit easier for folks to find out exactly what they need to know. If I'm working on a DXH, maybe 600, 800, I have a chapter on that particular. If I want to know QC concepts for maybe new employees or have them review it before they get involved with the IQAP process in the laboratory, this is an excellent resource. Again, these are updated on a periodic basis and will alert you with an IQAP banner alert when these are changed. Next, again, Matt alluded to administration, manage users. At this point, I'm the only one that's on this particular account. If I was to change an instrument, other instruments that I uh, have access to would be displayed. Let me do that for you. I'll go back in a minute here and change it. And if I can grab an instrument that actually provides you with access to another user, we'll see what we have. Nope, I guess I'm the only one on this account. But what happens, if you'll see the username in blue, you'll be able to access that by simply double-clicking it and grant access to that particular user for the instruments that are available. You'll simply select or deselect the box and then hit Submit. Also in our administration, you have your corporate reports, manage institutions, and preferences. Under Preferences, if you have this particular instrument under your account, do I want to display that instrument on my add instrument or display instrument or change instrument? You simply select the box. If you want to get a report alert when that instrument has a report ready, that box being checked will send you an email. If you don't, say you have many um, satellite labs and you really don't want to receive that report, you may have a supervisor that's um, responsible for that, you can deselect this and make them the responsible party. And since I made no changes, I'm going to sign out. Nope, I guess I made, have to hit submit, return to dashboard. Um, one thing we've noticed with the new site that I'm gonna to bring to your attention is the return to dashboard function. It takes you basically back to where you wanna start with your instrument but we're making a change as we move forward to maybe move this to the to beginning or to the top of the screens to facilitate ease of use. So we'll be changing that shortly. Um, let's go to new data submission. Let's give this a try. Um, I only have B1 data, so what I'm gonna do right now is actually change that instrument. I'm gonna to go to change instrument, and I'm gonna select from my whole group of available instruments my B1 system. Again, it's extremely important when you're submitting data, you're reviewing data, or you're trying to submit linearity or body fluid reports on your DXH to make sure that you have the proper instrument on the screen. Otherwise, your data will be rejected, and it has a tendency of possibly being set with the wrong instrument. So it's extremely important. Of particular importance are is when you enter something manually, and that would be something like a Linux, or body fluid linearity data. So be very, very important, or be very, very careful with that. When we upload instrument QC files, as you see here, we automatically check that data. We check it for the IQAP ID, we check it for the lot number, and we check it for expiration dating. So now I've selected B1, I'm gonna upload instrument QC files. This if you remember our old way of submitting data, I guess you could say back in 2015 at the end of the year we made this change, it was a very cumbersome product, uh, process. Um, I apologize to the folks that had to deal with this with the LHs and instruments before that. We're trying to make that easier and you'll see a lot of modifications as, you, as we move forward this year and next with making the ease of use 
as well as the appropriate statistics better for you. How do we add files? Select Add Files, and then you go to the particular drive that has the information that you want to look at. So in this case, I'm going to go to my jump drive, and I'm going to go, because I put it in this file, and I'm going to go to my 800. What I do then is I simply select the files that I want to upload, and again, verify, because you'll see it with an ID number, B1 is selected. Select the file, select Open. You'll see that it's been loaded, and start the upload process. There you have it. It's that easy. When you see the Submitted button, that means the data has been submitted to our database. It has not yet been imported. We import on an hourly basis, and once that's done, you'll see the imported status message there. That means it's been brought into the IQAP database. That means it's passed our business rules, and it's ready to be set through for reports. So submitted is the first process. Let's return to Dashboard. As you can see, sometimes it takes a little bit of a uh, time for the process to take hold. What happens or what that actually means is the access to the server, at this point, we probably have a ton of people submitting their data or accessing the server to review their reports or what have you. So it's important to just kind of bear with it. It does come through, but bear with us sometimes. You might notice a few seconds delay. So, so Patrick, uh, I'd like to change the format a little bit, but um, <clears throat> we, we got several questions on this topic uh, from, from uh, viewers, and I wanted to ask you, what are the most common errors that occur in this process uh, when, when you, you would see pending with errors? And, and can you give a little more detail on what pending with errors might mean? Sure. Um, typically, thank you, Stephen, for that question. <laughs> um, pending with errors means that when you make a submission, there's usually a parameter value that's outside of what we call our business rules, which is typically outside 3SD. You may have included within that submission um, an erroneous run. Um, or you may have made, if you are doing a manual entry, a clerical error. What we uh, provide to you, I'm going to demonstrate with this pending, is if I select on this, it basically opens up so that I can go in and make edits. Now, one thing with pending with errors is when you have that, you'll be able to go in and wherever it's read, it'll be noted for you of the parameter that's out, the value itself will be in red, and you can make a change to that value. I encourage you first and foremost, before you make any changes to anything that says pending with errors, you go back and follow your laboratory's quality assurance protocol for review of data. You want to make sure that before you edit or change anything that you have in the IQAP site, that it matches your laboratory protocol and it matches what you have on site on your instrument and matches the printout. So in case there is an audit or you have a quality control traceability from the instrument to the report. Thank Matt? you. Thank you. Okay. Here's one of those where I'm going to go back to return to dashboard. So as you can see, it's been submitted. The data is submitted here. It's pending and reported. So let's go through these particular headers here. Pool statistics, we basically highlighted. So I have a particular lot number of a control, 193, 240, 420, and submit. There you have it, body fluid level two, the control, and how many people are currently in the lab, the participant, lab count, the expected range, the assay value, the current mean, and of course, the 2SD and the variance. 
Now, one thing to remember when you want to go back through and you want to try to find, say, an assay sheet for this particular lot number, it's extremely easy to do so. Again, go to the top of the page, hematology assays, and simply put in that particular lot number. Jessica, could you give me that lot number again? 193. Lot number 193. 240. 193420. No, 240. Oh, 240. Thank 420. you. And the kit part number for body fluids? 7 no. Uh, part number. What is it? Six two eight zero three zero. Oh, three zero. Perfect. Aha. See, we check you all the time. Up. Oh, invalid part number. Invalid lot number. Again, what happens is you will not be able to pull up an assay sheet for a particular lot that's already been archived. Now, what happens is once the particular lot is greater than 120 days past expiration, the assay sheet, as well as the uh, raw data that's been submitted, is automatically put into archive. We, at that point, only have, for the next two years, the reports available for that particular control. So again, what we recommend you do is if you need an assay sheet for anything that's greater than two years out, you give us a call and we'll be able to pull that from our archive data. Matt? We're, are we ready for questions? Yes. Thank you, Madam Patrick, for the overview of Beckman Coulter's EIQAP. And now we would like to open this webinar up to questions. As a reminder, you can ask a question by typing it into the Q&A box on the top left side of your console. So, uh, Patrick, we have, and, and Jessica, we had a couple questions. <clears throat> uh, one question was, we had entered linearity data for body fluids before the update. It was on the database, but not yet submitted. So before the website was updated, mm -hmm. was it saved or not if it was not yet submitted? You know, that's a really good question. Um, when we actually went live, that data should still be there. Um, if not, please submit that information, your detailed information to us at iqap.reports at beckman.com. Um, it's important that we receive that feedback so we can see if it's still in our submitted data. Uh, we typically do not delete that. And if it's there, we'll definitely process that report for you. If it's been deleted, if it wasn't actually saved, it may actually be gone. So I do apologize for that, but let us look into that for you, Virginia. Or for Virgilita? Virgilita. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and then there was another question. Uh, the, the past few months of submissions from the LH780, it, it looked like the RDWSD was not reported or present, and they had to do manual submissions. Has, has that issue been resolved? Is this an issue that you've heard of from other customers? Not really. Um, we'll look into that, but RDWSD, if it's selected on the instrument and it's sent to us, it's automatically included. Um, RDW is a re RDWSD is a release parameter, and if you've selected it with your submission, be it when you do a summary data, whether you do a daily data, or whether you upload it, it should be there. So we'll, we'll look into that, but just make sure that you do have that selected um, when you make your IQAP files and what, uh, when you send those to us. Um, if we do not get that data within the submission, it's not selected at the instrument and therefore we don't get the data. So I would definitely check that, that particular selection when you're creating your IQAP file. Make sure that's selected on your instrument. So on the LH780 to check that, 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 that that's being... That's correct. Um, Here's a, a good one, and perhaps you could do a little demo, uh, uh, Patrick. So they, they have a user that has left the facility, and they wanted to remove their access for good reason. <laughs> so. Shannon, this happens all the time, and thank you for that question. Um, the best thing to do is leave us a note at contact us, 
and I'll have one of the IQAP folks that works with us go in there and delete that particular user. Um, we have a lot of folks that request that, and the best way to get rid of that person is to actually contact us. It's important that we actually maintain a tracking of who requests who to be deleted just in case there's any discrepancies. So we ask that you send us an email with the particular user, and that way we'll know who requested it, the date, and we'll track that. So please send that to us. Thank you. Okay, is it is it recommended to upload QC data for IQAP when the lot is completed, or better to upload it on a monthly basis? I think we talked about that a little bit. Um, at this point, um, Mary Grace, it really depends on your laboratory. On a routine basis, the, historically, it's been you like to see what the instrument's doing on a monthly basis. As the lot numbers typically last 90 to 120 days, you can upload it at, at the expiration date of the particular control. So I'm going to have to refer you back to your actual laboratory quality control process. And basically what historically we've always done or customers like to see is a monthly report. So I would recommend on a, from my personal perspective, it's probably a monthly upload. That way you get a snapshot much quicker than waiting for it after, so to speak, maybe 90 to 120 days. But again, always refer to your laboratory pro uh, protocol and, and practice before you do that. Thanks, Patrick. So the questions are really coming in now. It's, it's great. So uh, we have another question from Cheryl. I submitted my data through ProService. How long does it take to see that the data is submitted through? So if it's a different submission. Oh, that's, no, that's fine. Um, Cheryl, that's a really good question. We're in the process of updating our pro service update for transmission and notification to the website. Currently, if, if the server's not really busy, and it's a matter of basically your bandwidth, or really our bandwidth, if there's a lot of users competing for use or access to the server, it may you may get a delay. But typically, it should take no longer than, say, at the most 15 minutes. If it's greater than 15 minutes, we don't get it, um, then please give us a call. What you're going to see is if you go to the website, log in, say maybe 15 minutes to a half hour after you've submitted your data, you should see the submitted icon for that particular data submission. You should see this. In the future, you're going to get an automatic update. And again, we're in the process of making those changes now. But again, if you have any concerns about receipt of your data by Beckman Coulter's IQAP with ProService, just shoot us an email. We'll go into our submitted data and verify that you have it. And we're very, very anxious to help you out to verify that we did receive your data. Um, so another question is, can we extract uh, from Arlene, is can we extract a weekly EIQAP report for a weekly QC review? Okay, when you submit your data to IQAP, you automatically look for the outliers. So if you submit your data via summary data, or you upload it on an LH series, or you say you want to upload it on your DXH, you will automatically go through the review process, and any outliers will be identified and returned to you, and you'll see under the status column, pending with errors. That will be the pink pending with errors. Once again, when you see that, you're able to click on the file that's over under the ID in blue, and those that, are, that have failed the business rules or exceed 3SD, what have you, will be highlighted bold and red. Again, what you want to do is go back through, verify according to your laboratory's protocol what your next step is. Thanks, Patrick. So <clears throat> I have uh, three or four questions around uploading data directly from the DXH 800 as opposed to copying it to a USB stick? Or, and mm -hmm. you know, customers want to know are, what options they have for getting the uh, data to the, to the website. Okay. You essentially have three with an 800. With the 800, you have the ability to type in your statistics via summary. You can go to your EIQAP site, typically. Type in this lot number, 
an expiration date. Okay. So again, data submission. What I can do on a DXH is I can upload my instrument QC files, again, as I demonstrated. I can create daily data, or I can create a control summary data. When I do control summary data, I put in the shift, control level, lot number, and simply go on, and then what it asks you to do is put in your lot number, serial number, and et cetera. So again, that's pretty easy. The easiest way, the best way, is actually by using ProService. That way you can select the instrument, select if, you have a, if you're connected, you simply select the instrument, select the files that you want to send, and send them on over. That's the easiest, the most efficient way for you to submit your data on a DXH system. And that goes directly from the instrument? Absolutely. So, okay. Yeah. So hopefully that answered a few of those questions. Uh, and, and that would also bear true for the 600 as well? Yeah. Yeah, so, so any DXH 600 or 800, that is correct. How about uh, through a specific uh, submitting data uh, in a specific date range? Um, at this point, we're pretty much locked in by, I guess you could say, control level and control lot and expiration date. Um, we haven't really considered that. That's a really good. That's a really good point. So I'm going to have Jessica note that, and we'll put that into some of our specifications for updates. So I thank you for that. Um, that would be really, that's a really good idea. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Um, another quite basic question, so a good question, I think. So what, what does SE diff re really represent? Um, the SE diff is if you have your standard deviation, it's a derivation of that particular statistic. Um, if you actually go to the IQAP manual, a more detailed explanation is provided there for you. I really think it's best that you go there and pull that out because that's what it actually refers to. And it's a calculation of your standard deviation as compared to the pool over history. So, Linda, I'm going to refer you to the actual IQAP IFU that's listed under resources. And there you can search the PDF for that particular. So that's under the resources tab on, on the website. That's correct. You can go resources right from your EIQAP homepage. Okay. <clears throat> so if your current QC is running high on WBC, should you check the current lot on the website? to see if anyone has submitted yet, to see oh, if the pool has been running higher? That's a really good idea, Elena. Thank you for that. Um, what, that's, a, that's probably the first thing that I would do. If I was in your shoes, and I have been, believe me, many, many times, the first thing I do is go to see if, what the pool's doing. Again, the pool uh, statistics are only going to be as good as those people who have submitted their data. You, with the DXH800, you can submit that data at any time you want, and that's, that's, that's your prerogative. Again, the more folks that submit their data, the more information we're going to have to provide to you the pool statistics. So in my book, that's the first thing I would do. When you call into the Technical Support Center, we've taught the folks on the hotline that that's the first place they go, and then as we get more data, the pool statistics grow. There's one thing that I did want to go back, and I want to highlight to everybody, if you don't mind me, Matt, taking a no, no, we, we're, moment away from the question. We have 10 more minutes in the, in the hour. I'm, I'm happy that there's so many questions. Okay. When I go to cell control reports and I see this little recalculate button, when this recalculate button is in, as you can say, maybe blue, that means it's active. Matt, could you kind of get rid of the question? They don't see that. This recalculate button, when it's in gray, you can't really do anything with it. If it's in blue and you hit the button, it automatically recalculates that report to give you more statistics. In other words, it includes improved statistics with a higher number of participants. That's essentially giving you better accuracy and better, um, a better indication of the peer group for that particular level. I caution you on using the recalculate button. 
It does not get your, your report any sooner. As a matter of fact, it actually delays it because it creates another generation of reports, and we have to go back through and supersede the other reports. So again, only use the recalculate button if you want to get a report, if you um, submitted your data early, and you want to get it with an increased number of participants. So as Matt said earlier, 16 is our minimum, basically for your statistical calculation. If you submitted it early and you see that you've got maybe 20 participants, I would suggest going back through maybe a week or so later and then hitting that recalculate button and maybe getting that report generated again with the improved statistics, i.e. The, the increased level or number of participants. But if you submitted your um, data and you have a pool group of say 300 to 500, you don't need to hit the recalculate button again. Again, it doesn't do any, it doesn't really do you any, any disservice, but it does um, slow down the process of generating reports on our end. Thanks, Patrick. So we have many questions. I'm not sure that we're going to be able to answer them all. Uh, if, if, if we don't get to your questions, we'll, or we'll be sure to respond via email um, for, for, for the questions that are most the card, the card. Yeah. So if I submitted data for January and the card I, I submitted was defective, how can I retrieve that data? She, the, you know, Barbara says that she had law, uh, there were some issues printing the data, so she doesn't have a hard copy. But she said she submitted it in January. Um, Barbara, when the card is defective, um, there's really not a whole lot we can do. That means the card either did not get the data put to it Place to it with the process on the instrument, or somehow, some way, it may have gotten zapped or whatever uh, in the trans, uh, transfer from your laboratory to us. Um, it's highly recommended that at the end of your submission period, either the uh, at the end of the lot number or at the end of the month, that you do make a printout and at least record your um, summary data for that particular lot. That way, we can always go back and assist you with either re-entering it, or you can go to your website EIQAP page and um, actually put it in yourself. Again, once the card's defective, it's 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 really tough. I might suggest or recommend that if you have the opportunity, is to maybe do it twice um, to a particular card, especially if you've had one instance and maybe two in a row. Um, maybe trying to do that download IQAP, putting it to the reagent management card, do that twice so that you do have a backup. But again, first and foremost, we recommend that you do print out your data on a monthly basis or as you submit it. And again, print out the summary when you have an active diff or diff 2 so that you have each, each line item each day. And that's just in case you get flagged with an error, such as a high SD or what have you you may have an incorrect run within a file. Thanks. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have to uh, choose the, the following questions because we're running out of time. So do, do you know, uh, I'm sorry, hold on one second. I'm not familiar with uh, body fluid linearity. Is this a new product or is it similar to, to the Linux? Arium, that's a good question. Um, body fluid linearity is using the body fluid control, and after you've accumulated a minimum of six runs for each level, you can go to the body fluids linearity process on your EIQAP website under new data submissions, and you put that data in at that particular point by level, by expiration date, and et cetera. The body fluid control has been approved for a multiple uses. Number one is to monitor the performance and accuracy of the instrument using the control, but it's also available so that you can use the product to demonstrate a reportable range. So that's why using level uh, one, two, or three, or low, however it's, it's uh, explained, putting the data in under your new data submissions tab body fluid uh, linearity, and putting the data there will generate a formal report for you. Again, it's not a new product. It's using the body fluid control for that particular use. 
currently we enter our data. Cindy wants to know if they enter the data monthly currently and they want to switch to daily, do they have to do an end of month report or not? That that, that would become available or, or uh, quite frankly, Cindy, if you do it daily, um, that's a lot of work. So I, I applaud you for that. The second thing is, is when you do your data daily, always select save at the bottom of the page. We'll verify that your entries have been done so correctly and alert you in red if they're not. The second thing is, is when you're done and you want to submit that data at the end of the month, select submit. Save and then submit. It will automatically go to the IQAP database. It'll be submitted and hopefully within an hour, maybe two, it'll be at that point imported into the database and sent to the report generator. So again, daily data, save it every day or whenever you enter it. At the end of that month or whenever you want to generate a report, select save and then submit. Thank you. So uh, we are getting so many questions, uh, but let, we'll have time for one more technical question. And uh, the one I wanted to talk about was, can we combine several months worth of data for the same lot from Margaret? Well, Margaret, I'm thinking you probably want a combined report. Um, right now, we have them broken up, I guess you could say monthly, but if you did want a combined report for the particular lot, and I'm considering what you're saying is an actual lot number, um, we'll put that into our future consideration. Um, I'm not sure that we can do that now. I'll have to actually go back and check. But I, I think we do give you a cumulative if you do not break it up. But I want to go back and verify that for you. Okay. So, uh, Patrick, the, the final question we're going to, be able to take from the list, I think, is, is an important one. And I think you mentioned it, but I think we need to do it once again more slowly. Uh, if, if there's a question about IQAP, what email address should people use for for sending questions. It's iqap.reports at beckman.com. And if you look at my screen, it's right there. So iqap.reports at beckman.com is the email address we're showing on the screen right now. So uh, that's all we have time for for Q&A. I would like to thank everyone for attending today's webinar presentation. Thanks again for your time today.